Hello viewers, Steve Tassie, the board game guy, here to talk about dexterity games. Anyone who knows me knows that I love a good dexterity game. Whether it's flicking, flipping, stacking, shooting, grabbing, or slapping, odds are I'm having a great time. So what are my top 10 favorite dexterity games? I'm glad you asked. Before I get into the games themselves, I want you to know that this was not an easy list for me to make. First off, there's a ton of great dexterity games out there and only 10 spots on a top 10 list. Curse you numbers! There are definitely going to be games that you love that aren't on this list. Heck, there are games that I love that aren't on this list. Let me know your favorite dexterity excellence in the comments below because I'm always on the lookout for a new one I've never played. My first question was, what's allowed for consideration? Should it be pure dexterity games? I decided that if I only considered games that are all about the grabbing, the flicking, and the stacking, then I'd be leaving out a lot of great games like Ascending Empires, Finger Guns at High Noon, or Galaxy Trucker that use dexterity mechanisms at their core, but layer strategy, social, or other elements on top of the gameplay. I decided that anything that used one of the dexterity elements of reflexes, accuracy, or steadiness as a cornerstone of the gameplay could be considered for the list. Number 10. I thought I'd start with a classic, Crokinole. With its roots in 1800s Canada, Crokinole is basically 360 degree tabletop curling. While it has its devotees around the world, earning the number 60 spot in the Board Game Geek's ranking system with a highly respectable score of 8 out of 10, it doesn't get a ton of attention outside of the Great White North. It's known to hobbyists, but it isn't Monopoly when it comes to name recognition. Players take turns flicking wooden discs into the ring, trying to place their discs into scoring position while knocking their opponent's discs out of position. Or even better, knocking them out of the ring entirely. And if you fail to hit an opponent's disc with your disc, then your disc is removed from play. After all the discs have been shot, only the side with more points on the board scores, adding the difference in points to their overall score. The first side to reach 500 points wins, although you can set whatever victory threshold you like. Inexpensive boards are available in toy shops and many hobby stores, but really nice crokinole sets are made by master craftspeople and are likely to set you back several hundred dollars. Crokinole's flicking mechanism sets the scene for many 20th and 21st century games, such as crossbows and catapults, catacombs, ascending empires, flick 'em up, and more. Number nine, Happy Salmon. Happy Salmon was originally published by North Star Games in two different player sets, which could be combined for up to 12 player mayhem. The latest edition comes from Exploding Kittens and only supports a maximum of eight players. The game takes no skill and it's just ridiculous silly fun. If you judge your good time on how much laughing you are doing, then a Happy Salmon is for you. Each player has a deck of cards with three of each of four different actions on the cards. There's the high five, the pound it, the switcheroo, and the eponymous happy salmon. The goal is to get rid of all of your cards by matching with another player and correctly performing the given action. Players start by simultaneously revealing a card and trying to do the action with someone else who has the same card showing. Players who succeed in matching shed their cards and reveal a new one. Players who don't find a match or get frozen out of one can either keep their current card active and hope that someone else's new card matches theirs, or they can put the current card on the bottom of the deck and reveal a new one. Either way, play continues in real time until someone has shed their 12th card. Pound it and high five are fairly self-explanatory actions, but the other two need some description. Switcheroo means that you and the other player swap places uh, in the player circle. You can play the game seated at a table, but with all the switching, it's best to play standing in a circle. Happy Salmon forces you and another player to slap your forearms together with your hands flopping like fishtails. 
you must make three full slaps before you can shed your card. I wish I had footage to show you, but so far no one has allowed me to film the absurd amounts of fun that they're having. Other speed-based dexterity games that could have made my list include Spot It, Anomia, Jungle Speed, and Shrimp Cocktail, aka Shrimp. Normally, I don't like to talk about out-of-print games because if you can't get your hands on it, what's the point of me making you aware of it? But I make an exception for Sorry Sliders because it frequently shows up on the shelves in thrift shops, so it's surprisingly easy to acquire, especially if you've got some patience. Sorry Sliders takes the scoring mechanics of Sorry, the flicking of Crokinole, and adds area effects and a variety of targeting boards. Players shoot their pawns into the target zone, trying to get into scoring position and knocking their opponent's pieces out of position. When the shooting is done, players use the points earned to move their scorekeeping pawns up the score track, and the first one to get all their score pawns home wins. Number seven. Now we get to the first stacking game on my list. Rhino Hero from Haba Games and designers Scott Frisco and Steven Strumpf. Stacking games were first made popular by Leslie Scott's Jenga, but the 40 years since its invention have seen many better iterations of the piling stuff on other stuff concept. Rhino Hero is Jenga meets Uno, as players try to get rid of all of their floor cards by building an apartment building out of cards. The first person to get rid of all of their cards wins the game, or the person with the smallest hand left when the tower collapses is the winner. Of course, if you're the one who knocked it over, you don't get to win. The regular edition can get up to three feet tall, but I went out and I bought the Japanese import giant special edition, which, as you can see, gets quite a bit taller. Other balancing games that might have made my list include the Animal Upon Animal Family, Riff Raff, Rhino Hero Super Battle, and Junk Art. Number six, Rock Paper Wizard by Canadian designers Senfung Lim and Jay Cormier brings us to gesture-based games. Others include Bunny Bunny Moose Moose, Hands On, and Finger Guns at High Noon. I chose Rock Paper Wizard because I love the theme of battling wizards, the mechanism of the rotating spellbook, the way the various spells you can cast affect the other players. In Rock Paper Wizard, players are a group of wizards who have just defeated a dragon and are trying to split the hoard of gold between them. Of course, and no one can agree on who did the most dragon slaying, and so who should get the most gold and it becomes an all-out magical brawl to see which wizard can get 25 gold pieces from the treasure pile before anyone else. After each round of spell casting, you want to be the closest wizard to the horde so that you get to grab more gold than anyone else. Every round, there are a bunch of spells available for the entire group to choose from, and each round, the oldest spell is discarded and a new spell appears at the opposite end of the lineup. Each spell requires a different gesture to cast, and they come in three categories. Attack spells, which directly affect one or more of your opponents. Defense spells, which protect yourself in some way. And then the gold piece spells that let you steal money from other players. Every round, a different wizard has the speed potion. So while everyone casts their spells simultaneously, i.e. they throw up their gestures at the same time, the player with the speed potion resolves their spell first and then so on clockwise around the table. Some spells can only affect wizards whose spells haven't resolved yet, so you have to be careful which spell you cast and which wizard you target with it. This is another game that I would love to show you some footage of it in action. Unfortunately, I'm all by myself here, and this is a game that really needs a group of people to make it shine. Number five. Galaxy Trucker is a sci-fi strategy adventure game that uses speed to govern the first half of each mission. In this game by Vlada Chivato, the award-winning designer of Codenames, 
Players are interstellar shipping pilots, and, and each mission they compete to build the best ship as quickly as they can from the communal pool of component tiles. Rules for tile placement are similar to Carcassonne, so tile sides must always match, but the building rules are a real-time frantic race to get the pieces you need to give your ship the best chance of surviving the threats and hazards it's about to face, like pirates, asteroid fields, and worse. You also want to make sure that the ship will let you capitalize on the opportunities you will encounter, such as treasure planets and derelict spacecraft to salvage. Number four. Tribe is a stacking game from Japanese publishing company Itten Games. It gives us a ring of five human figures, an assortment of weird wooden shapes in bright neon colors, a die, and some point tokens. The goal is to earn points by creating tribes of humans by linking them in groups of three or five based on the shapes and colors of the adornments that get draped and balanced on them. Knocking adornments off the people will cost you points, and the player with the most points after the final of the unique adornments has been placed wins. When balancing pieces, it is important to remember that no two adornments of the same shape or color can touch each other. It is one of the harder to get games from this list, but it is definitely worth tracking down if you like stacking games. Number three, designed by Bill Payne and published by German publisher Zach Verlag, Via Paletti is a stacking game that can be hard to get in North America. But with 10 different international gaming awards, including the 2002 Spiel des Jahres Prize under its belt, it's well worth the effort and expense to track down. Players are competing to build a tower out of oddly shaped floor plates and colored pillars of various sizes and point values. Whoever has one of their pieces or the most points worth of pieces on the top of the tower is the master builder. And whoever is the master builder when the tower finally collapses is the winner. Unless, of course, they're the one who caused it to fall down, in which case their predecessor, the player who held the title before they did, wins the game. If you decide to track down Via Paletti, be aware that the Wiggles 3D edition, which is what you're looking at right now, has some changes to the rules that are definitely inferior to the original Zoc version. So if you get the Wiggles version, make sure that you download a PDF of the original German rules before you play. Number two. Tokyo Highway is the second game from Itten Games on this list, which shouldn't be. <clears throat> Tokyo Highway is the second game from Itten Games in Japan to make my list, which shouldn't be surprising since they specialize in dexterity games. Originally available as a two-player game with a two-player add-on extension, the North American release is a four-player game in one single big box. Players are building intricately twisting networks of roadways and support pillars trying to be the first to get all of their cars on the highway. Even though the production design went with a seriously minimalistic aesthetic, it is still striking to see this game on the table as the gray roads dotted with brightly colored cars intertwine in an ascending and descending labyrinth. Number one, Oliver Richberg's Minara is another game from Zach Verlag in Germany. It builds on some of Via Paletti's ideas, but presents them in a fully cooperative game and does it wonderfully. Players are working to build a beautiful temple out of colored pillars and a supply of uniquely shaped floor tiles. Players draw challenge cards that govern what they must do on their turn, and the colored pillars in their hands must be placed onto available correspondingly colored spots on the floor tiles. The goal is to have the tower be standing at the minimum required height when one of the various end conditions arise, but each time someone fails at a challenge card, the minimum required height increases by one floor. The game is beautiful 
to behold on tabletop. And like all good co-op games, it has a scalable difficulty. So once you begin to get good at the game, you can ramp up the challenge. And there you have it. My top 10 favorite dexterity games. Was yours on the list? If you want to see either Tokyo Highway or Minara in greater detail, I do have separate videos for each of those games on my channel. I'm Steve Tassi, the board game guy, wishing you lots of grabbing, stacking, slapping, flicking, flipping fun. Stay safe and be kind. I'm here in the Board Game Guy kitchen just whipping up another batch of gaming related content, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you're notified when it's uploaded.